Praise God. Welcome to another segment of the House of Prayer online ministry. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for our current pastor, Pastor Patricia Harris and Apostle John Williams out of Fuglerville, Texas. Today we're going to talk about God is in control. God is in control. Our text will be coming from Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Isn't that good news? No matter what you're going through, no matter what trials and tribulations the enemy tried to throw your way on a daily basis, know that God is the one that has given him permission to come in to your area. Satan can't do anything to any of us without God's permission. God allows him to come in because God is pulling and purging on the inside of us what he knows he has planted there. There is a ministry in each one of us. Your ministry doesn't necessarily have to be in the pulpit. Your ministry could be out on the street ministering to people who are in the grocery store, letting them know that there is a God who sits high and looks low. Recently, Pastor Danny Harris, my, my partner and the founder of this ministry, passed November 15, 2015. And I find myself out in the world going to and from, giving God praise when I'm in the ministry, giving God praise no matter where I am. And people who I thought were soldiers in the body of Christ have a tendency to look at me and think that there's something wrong with Sister Pat. Don't she know that she just lost her husband of 16 years? Why isn't she crying? Why isn't she weeping? Why isn't she walking with a bow down head? Look at her 12 year old son. Don't he miss his daddy? Yes to all those answers. Yes, we miss Pastor Harris. But we know that there's a God who allowed this situation to happen. Therefore, he's pulling and purging something out of Sister Pat because he knows that there's a ministry inside of me and he wants to pull and purge it out of me. And by doing so, he allowed Dr. Danny Harris to go on and be with him. Be not deceived. Cancer did not take Pastor Harris out of here. Pastor Harris asked God to take him. He got tired on the way. He got tired fighting that battle. I tried to keep him here. I wanted to pray him here. But he told me one day, he said, wait a minute. Uh -uh. God's will must be done in my life. The Bible said there's a time and a season for all men to be born. And there's a time and a season for all men to die. It's written. I had to stop back and humble myself and repent and tell God that will be done. So I know that it was God's will for me to be here this day as a woman of God, serving a righteous God. God has not failed me. God has not failed my family. Why would I stop praising and worshiping him? God is a good God. God blessed me with a husband that was a saved man, sanctified man, living holy and living the word of God according to the word of God. He didn't just make up his own word. We believe what we read. We believe what we teach. I don't have a sad story to tell nobody. God is good to me. I'm going to continue to lift up my hands. I'm going to continue to give him praise. I'm going to continue to look into the hills from which come in my help. My help comes from the Lord. I thank and I praise God for all of the prayers. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. And I thank God for those prayers. Those prayers is what's keeping me up. Those prayers was keeping my son up. We thank and we praise God for that because it is written, the prayers of the righteous. I'm not walking out here because I'm a superwoman. No, be not deceived. No, no, sir, no, ma'am. I know prayers is keeping me up. I know the Holy Ghost inside of me is keeping me to move on on a daily basis, to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus. Because every one of us has an appointed time according to the word of God. I thank God every day for the opportunity to rise up and to praise him. I don't take it for granted. And I tell my children not to take it for granted. God is good. We owe him praise. If there's breath in your body, you owe him praise. You got strength in your arm. You owe him to lift up your hands and surrender all. And tell him, Lord, I thank you 
Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I can do nothing without you. It is you. I live, move and have my being. I thank and I praise God for this day. Continue to keep the house of prayer ministry in your prayers. Continue to keep all of the ministers on the roster in your prayers. We thank and we praise God for this opportunity. Knowing that God is in control makes all the difference. He said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, 31 and 6, excuse me. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't say your husband will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't say your mama will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't say your daddy will never leave you nor forsake you. He said he'll never leave you. Therefore, understand God is in control. Your bills is due. Your rent is due. You out overspending trying to do Christmas shopping. You're in control of that situation. But if you humble yourself under the mighty hands of God, when that income come in and you pay your tithes and offering to your 10% to your local ministry, if you don't have a local ministry, send it in to the house of prayer. This is good ground. We'll use it solely to lift up the name of Jesus and building up the kingdom of God. Then you go out and you do Christmas shopping. God is in control because you have did what you were supposed to do according to the word of God with your finances. You've got to pay your tithes and offering. You can't expect to go out here and get your check that you work for. And actually, it's not your check. It's actually God's money. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything in the world belongs to God, including you. You go out there and you work. And you wonder why January come, you waiting and panting. I can't wait to get my W-2 so I can file my taxes because you've overspent in December. Trying to buy gifts for people and trying to impress them. And half the toys that you buy, most of the kids don't do nothing but tear them up within like two weeks. A waste of 20 and $30. You take that money and go out and invest in your children into a savings bond with their education. Because everybody needs an education when you get 18. You got to make decisions when you graduate. Either you're going to go to the service or you're going to go to school. Or you can take that money and build up a nest egg. You never know when it may rain. And a thunderstorm comes near all of us at some season in our life. And you're going to need that extra money as bag up. Don't overspend. Let's be wise with the thing that God has given us and understand that God is in control if we allow him to be in control. See, the thing about God is he's not going to force himself on nobody. He stands at the door and he knocks. It's up to us to open up the door and let him in so he can be in control. Remember what the book of Deuteronomy 31 6 says, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God. He it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. It is written. If you obey his word. If you follow him. If you humble yourself. If you listen. God will never lead you wrong. Never. Understand God is in control. You get your stuff. You pay your tithes. I'm living right. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do Lord. And the enemy is still fighting me. What's going on? God said, I'm still in control. But are you listening to every word I told you to do? Or are you trying to hold on to some things in your past that's hindering you from going forth in your future? He said, I'm in control. But are you listening? See, God can be in control and we are partly letting him be in control. So therefore, he's not all the way in control of our life. I can say with my mouth, God is in control. God is running things. But if I look at your lifestyle and you look at my lifestyle and it doesn't line up with the word of God, my flesh is in control. Let's just be honest. Let's call it what it is. Your flesh is in control. Your flesh is as filthy rags and nasty just like my flesh. Ain't nobody flesh is good. The Bible says there's no good things in the flesh. Uh -uh. If we walk in the spirit, according to the word of God, we can obey the spirit of God. And our life will line up with the word of God. Sure, we're going to have trials and tribulations like the next person. But the great thing about it is when you're in the body of Christ and God is in control, you'll be able to go through those situations giving God praise. It'll confuse the enemy because you praising God so hard. They be like, I know that uh, she just got fired. She giving God crazy praise. That's right. 
because he is worthy to be praised because he allowed you to get that, that job. And the reason that he probably allowed you to get fired if you didn't do nothing of your own recognizance is because he got something better for you. Wait on him. Wait on the Lord. Trust him. Look unto the hills from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord because God is in control no matter how bad the situation looks. I remember years ago something happened to me. And I was like, wow, if I'd have just obeyed and if I'd have just, you know, did what I was supposed to do when I was back in my backsliding condition. I'll never forget it. And I was so hurt that it happened. And I thought about it as I got saved. I said, you know what, Lord, even in that situation, you was in control because then people could have killed me. You know, but instead, because of the hand of God that was upon my life, even in my times of disobedience, and I was doing whatever I wanted to do, God still was in control of my life. But because I was being selfish, because I was thinking about my own will, doing the things that I wanted to do, because I'm thinking I'm grown and I know what I need, I got myself in that situation. But God's hand still stepped in and love pulled me out so I would be able to survive this day to tell that testimony. I will forever thank God for all of the things that he's allowed me to go through, all the things he's brought me out of. I cannot tell it all, and I'll never be able to pay him, but I can say thank you, sir. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord.